Good morning children. We continue the chapter physical and chemical changes. This is the third lecture. Changes are classified into natural and man-made changes, desirable and undesirable changes, periodic and non-periodic changes, reversible and irreversible changes, physical and chemical changes. In the last lecture, I had done natural and man-made changes with you. Also, periodic and non-periodic changes were complete. Today, I start the lecture with desirable and undesirable changes. Desirable changes are those changes which we want to occur. These changes are useful to us. For example, ripening of fruits. You can see the strawberries ripening. The change of color takes place from green to red. The germination of seed. You can see in the graphics how the seed germinates. The plumule grows up above the soil. Plumule is the baby shoot. And the radical that is the baby root develops within the soil. It penetrates into the soil. Change of season is also a desirable changes. Other desirable changes are occurrence of photosynthesis in green plants, pasteurization of milk or formation of curd from milk. Undesirable changes are those changes which we do not want to take place. They are harmful to human beings or cause destruction. For example, rusting of iron. When iron rusts, huge loss of money and infrastructure takes place. Souring of milk, rotting of fruits and vegetables. Generally, rotting of fruits and vegetables is enhanced in the presence of moisture. Other undesirable changes are cyclonic storms, curdling of milk, erosion of soil, Exhaustive mining or overutilization of groundwater. Here in this table, we have differentiated between desirable and undesirable changes. Changes can be good to us or it can be bad for us. But there are certain changes which are both desirable and undesirable. For example, burning of fuel. It is desirable for heating and cooking but undesirable because it causes pollution. Rain can also be desirable but excessive rain can cause flood and is then undesirable change or harmful to us. Next students we study about physical changes. Properties such as shape, size, color and state of a substance are called its physical properties. When the shape, size, appearance or state of a substance is altered but its chemical composition remains the same, then we say that physical change of that matter has taken place. No new substance is formed. It is usually a change which is reversible. That is, by reversing the process or the condition, the original substance can be obtained. The first example of physical change that we see in nature is the water cycle. The sun heats up the water from the rivers, oceans, lakes and water changes into water vapor by the process of evaporation. This is a physical change as there is no change in composition of water. Plants also lose water in the form of water vapor from their leaves into the air by the process of transpiration. As the water vapor rises up into the air, it starts cooling down and forms tiny water droplets and they come together to form clouds. This process is called as condensation. This is also a physical change where from gaseous state the water changes into liquid state. When the clouds start getting heavy and cannot hold the water droplets anymore, it falls back to the earth in the form of rain, hail or snow. 
This process is called as precipitation. The water then gets collected in the form of surface water and ground water. Then the sun starts heating up the water once again and leads to evaporation of water again. The snow also melts to form water that flows in the rivers and the lakes. This is also a physical change. Students, dissolving sodium chloride in water is a physical change. When sodium chloride is dissolved, a salt solution is obtained. If we heat the salt solution in a china dish over a water bath or directly on gas stove, we will see that water evaporates and sodium chloride is left in the vessel. So, dissolving of sodium chloride in water is a physical change. Substances like ammonium chloride, iodine, dry ice, all these substances, they sublime on heating. We can get back solid ammonium chloride or carbon dioxide, dry ice from its vapor on cooling. Glowing of an electric bulb. When an electric bulb is switched on, an electric current passes through the filament of the bulb. As a result, the filament glows to give light. When it is switched off, the filament returns to its normal condition and the bulb stops glowing. Here, no new substance is formed inside the bulb during this process. So, glowing of an electric bulb is a physical change. Breaking of glass is also a physical change. As when a glass tumbler breaks and forms many pieces, each piece resembles the original one in composition. No new substance is formed. Magnetizing a piece of iron nail is temporary and a physical change as no new substance is formed during this process. We can magnetize a piece of iron by rubbing a bar of magnet over it several times. And this magnetism is lost if we heat the same iron piece. Also, if we drop the iron that has been temporarily magnetized on the floor, it will lose its magnetism. Drying of wet clothes is also a physical change. When the wet clothes are spread, evaporation of water occurs. The water in the clothes absorbs heat from the surrounding and changes to its vapor state. No new substance is formed over here. Next we have chemical changes. A chemical change is a permanent change in which the original substance loses its own composition and properties. One or more new substances are formed with a composition and properties different from the original substance. This change is irreversible and a chemical change is also called a chemical reaction. Now let's take a few examples which will make understanding of chemical changes easier to you. During burning of wood, new substances like ash and smoke are produced which have properties different from that of wood. Heat and light are also evolved in this process. The change is permanent and irreversible as the ash cannot be converted back to wood. Thus, the burning of wood is a chemical change. Rusting of iron is also a chemical change. When a piece of iron is left out in moist air, it slowly changes into dull, brittle, brown substance called rust. The chemical composition of rust is different from iron. The properties also for rust is different from iron. Rust cannot be converted back to iron once again by physical methods. It is irreversible and permanent change. Hence, rusting of iron is also a chemical change. When a piece of magnesium ribbon is heated in a flame, it burns with a dazzling white light and produces a white powder of magnesium oxide. For this reason, it is often used in flares and fireworks during Diwali. 
Students, why not do this experiment at home? Heat some sugar in a spoon. After some time, sugar starts melting. Until this point, we say physical change has occurred as solid sugar has just turned into liquid state. The substance is still sugar. Slowly, it turns into light brown color. Heat breaks down sugar into carbon and water. The change is irreversible and permanent. Then we see that it turns completely black slowly. Hence, we can say heating of sugar is a chemical change. Next example, we take of combination of iron and sulfur by heat. We know that iron gets attracted towards a magnet and sulfur dissolves in carbon disulfide. These are the properties of iron and sulfur respectively. Now, when finely powdered iron and sulfur are heated together, they combine to form black iron sulfide. Now, the composition and properties of iron sulfide is different from those of iron and sulfur. That is, it no longer gets attracted towards a magnet nor does it dissolve in sulfur. Hence, formation of iron sulfide from iron and sulfur is a chemical change. Here are a few examples of chemical reactions or chemical changes in everyday life. Digestion of food in our stomach is a chemical change. The process of manufacture of food that is photosynthesis taking place in the stomata of the leaves is also a chemical change. Fermentation, washing, baking etc. are all examples of chemical change. Here's a recapitulation of the difference between a physical change and a chemical change. Physical change are always change in color, state, density, volume, etc. Whereas chemical change is always accompanied with change in chemical composition and properties. During a physical change, no new substance is formed and the change is temporary. You can obtain the original form of the substance by just a simple change in physical methods. By altering the condition, we can get back the original substance. It is reversible. Whereas in a chemical change, always there is formation of new substance or substances. This change is permanent and irreversible. We cannot get back the original substance by simple physical methods. A chemical change is always accompanied with absorption or evolution of energy. In this slide, we have few examples of reversible changes and irreversible changes. That's all for today. In the next video, I will be taking up exothermic and endothermic changes. Also, you will have some work, some homework to do. Till then, bye-bye.